Here are folks. The next topic is maxima and minima. Now in our last example, we looked at this parabola here. This was 2x squared minus 1. 2x squared minus 1. So we can see here the shift down by one unit. And then we found the equation of the tangent to be y equals minus 1. This line here and the slope of that line was zero, and that represents a special point. So if I follow along a point, if I pick a point here just before that point of interest, sketch the slope, here we have some negative value, and then just after the point of interest, sketch the slope, here I have some positive. And so transitioning between the two, you have to go through a zero. So at some point you're going to have this m equals zero. And this point here, in this case, 0, comma, minus 1, represents uh, what we call a turning point, where the slope has transitioned from negative to positive. Uh, a turning point could also have a slope transitioning from positive to negative. This special point here is called a minimum because it's the lowest value in the local neighborhood. So looking on the curve, any other values around here are bigger. And by values, I mean the output value on the y-axis. So this one is 0, this one is plus 1. They're all bigger than minus 1. That's the absolute minimum of that parabola. So over here, we could also have an absolute maximum, where this turning point represents the biggest value, at least in the local area. So sometimes these are called local minima or maxima. And that's because there might be others outside the window that we have not yet found. Using these two that I plotted, perhaps the curve does something like this. Well, now we can see here we have a local maximum at this point. We have a local minimum at this point. And we have another local maximum here, which turns out to be even bigger than this local maximum. So that's why we use this terminology that it is only local. So a cubic function, as shown here, has both. Coming up, my slopes are starting out positive steep, and then they're decreasing to zero, and then they go to negative. So the transition indicates a local maximum. And then coming back around here, this transition indicates a local minimum. And the point where these happen is a zero slope. So it doesn't matter if it's a maximum or a minimum, they both have a zero slope. So here's a cubic function. We can see the up, down, up behavior on the graph. And so we know that we are looking for two stationary points. In fact, I can just highlight them on the graph, but let's actually find them algebraically. So how do we find these stationary points? Well, it's related to the idea that the slope equals zero. And if we think about how do we find when slopes are equal to zero, we have to find that gradient that is equal to zero. So I've got a function here. So the first thing I'm going to do is find the derivative. And then where that derivative equals zero, I should find a local minimum or a local maximum is a turning point. Okay, so one, find f prime at x. So here we have y, so I'll say dy by dx. And then using my power rule, this is x, not x cubed, this is x squared minus 2x. So that's step one, find that gradient function. Remember, this is all the gradients all the slopes as a function. So we want to narrow it down to just those points where the slopes are flat. So step two here will be to set f prime at x equal to zero. So zero on the left equals x squared minus 
2x. So what I've done here is I've taken this derivative and I've replaced it with zero because I know that is where the slope equals zero. I can sketch it on my graph here. There's one of them and there's a second one. Okay, so step three now is to solve for these points. So this is a mini equation. I have here zero equals x squared minus two x. So how do you solve this? Well, it looks like I can factor in x from both terms. So x minus two. And now I've got two answers. I've got one answer here that says x equals zero. And I've got another answer here that says x minus two equals zero. So we solve this mini equation for x equals positive two. So one answer, two answers. And when I look at my graph, I indeed have one peak at x equals zero, and then a couple further down, one, two, I have another, um, in this case, it's a local minimum, but I don't necessarily know that just yet. Okay, going back to my question, I was asked to find the stationary points. So this means I need to find x and y values. So for the points at x equals zero, this is going to give me one. So I'm looking for now f at zero. And this is going to be, I'm going to sub in zero. So that term is gone, sub in zero, that term is gone. y equals minus two. So my first point then is zero comma minus two is a turning point. And my second point is going to be f at two is what I'm looking for. And we can simplify this. So this point now is two comma minus three and a third. So I have two turning points here for this equation, and you can confirm on the graph that indeed we did find those two turning points. One last question is if we know the point zero minus two, how can we tell if it's a maximum or a minimum? How do we know if it is a peak or a trough? And similarly with my other point, how do I know which one is which between a max and a min? Maybe they're both local maximums. And that will be our next topic.